we have seen some insane advancements in rendering realistic 3D people. There is still a long way to go before 3D faces are indistinguishable from the real thing, but we are closing the gap of the uncanny valley. So what do you do if you don't have access to the crazy rigs Hollywood uses to capture an actor's face? Where do you start in post-production if you're just a solo artist? Luckily, 3D artist Mike Smith has some of the answers. He was kind enough to swing by the headquarters and give us a presentation on his techniques using photogrammetry and a couple 3D sculpting and modeling tools to build a 3D head. This is a project that we want to continue and evolve. Eventually, we want to add motion and facial features. Just because you may not have a million dollar budget, it does not mean you shouldn't be able to achieve the incredible. Here are some of the highlights from Mike's presentation. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Smith. So what we're going to talk about today is an experiment I've been running with Chris and the boys um, at Production Crate to do 3D scanning with as little expensive equipment as possible. There's a turntable on the floor that's big enough for a person to stand on. So we got our friend Alex to stand on it and we recorded just him spinning. We didn't record video, we snapped pictures because they, they're better. There's no motion blur, they're higher res. So once we take, what, like 80-ish photos, we put them into a program called Reality Capture, which stitches them together and makes this. If we turn off the texture, you can see how messy the surface really is. This isn't good to work with. Or we have to sculpt this, we have to fix the topology because the topology comes in really, really dirty. We need to get the textures from the scan, which look like this, no organization whatsoever. And we have to bake them onto a clean UV, and then we have to build our skin material. I'm just trimming away things I don't need using my clay buildup. It's my favorite brush, don't use standard brush. So trimming off all the parts we don't need, checking proportions. If you want to get into 3D stuff, 3D art or any kind of digital art, don't neglect the foundational things because the 3D tools always change, but the foundations never change. So this is where we're going to do retopology, and you could do retopology in any program. So I'm using this program called Wrap 3, where you take a generic base mesh with just clean topology, but it doesn't look like your guy. So now it's just shrink wrapping the good mesh to his face based on all those common points that I clicked around. And now I've got this good mesh that looks like Alex, and you can see them compared next to each other. If you remember, the color map for the scan is just random. You know, it looks good, but the UVs are really bad. So how do we get that detail onto there? So what I'm going to do is go to my crazy one here that's semi-smooth. And what you need to do is bake the texture into a poly painting. So now what I can do is take my um, geometry, my good one, with the good UVs right here. I'm going to project the detail of the sculpt and the color map, but I don't want to actually keep the sculpt because my sculpt is better than the scan, right? So what I need to do is store a morph target. So I've got my good sculpt, but no color, and I've got my bad sculpt, but with color. I'm gonna turn them both on, like that. And as long as they're both visible, the one that I have selected is gonna be the one receiving the detail. So I'm gonna go down to project in the subtool palette and go project all. There we go. If I turn off my bad sculpt, I can see that my good sculpt did a pretty good job. So now it kind of messed up my sculpt. So what I have to do is go to my morph target right here and I'll increase the morph until it goes back to my sculpt, but it keeps the color and then I can delete the morph target. So that's how I got his texture map. Now let's talk about how we get the ultra fine detail. Um, there's a few different ways you could do this. You could just get skin packs, skin alphas from online. You can go into ZBrush's alphas. They have some pretty good ones. And I'm going to show you a few different ways. And we're also going to use something called surface mimic. First, if you just want to sculpt these directly. So I've got a few skin packs. I'll start with one of ZBrush's built-in ones. So as I cut in, I can paint directionally and give him directional wrinkles, or I can go in a circle and do that skin microsurface. Another asset, which I recommend, surfacemimic.com. What they are is uh, really, really high-res scans, 2D, like 8K, 12K scans of just chunks of people's faces. You get a flattened UV map of someone's face, basically. Uh, and you might think, okay, that's cool, but obviously the UVs don't match my UVs, so how do we get that on the model? We're gonna projection paint it on. I prefer to use a program called Mudbox, which is just another program like ZBrush, but it's just made by Autodesk. So what I wanna do is import all my stencils. I've already downloaded them to this computer. So here they are, they look like this. They're just flattened UV mapped chunks of the face. It's real height value, so white bumps out, black bumps in. And I'll just project this on. And it's just projecting onto an 8K texture map 8K UV map. So once you've got your map, you just come over here, right click on the diffuse channel and you can export the merge channels. And what you end up with is, there we go. So let me go in and I'm gonna smooth away a chunk of the face again. 
and we'll use my map to fix it. You want to import it into alpha right here. I've got my alpha in the alpha palette as if I was going to start sculpting, whoops, like it's a brush. But as long as it's loaded here in this alpha palette on your brush, I can come down here to masking. So I've got my inflate brush, turn the intensity way down. And as I sculpt, if I go a little heavy handed so you can see it, you can see it's bringing it out based on that super high res map. So now the height from that mud, bo mud box texture is combined with my hand sculpted wrinkles and the creases. It's all in there in the height information of the face. When you're building a skin material, human skin, it's more important to get high, height information first, get that right, then get the specular contribution and the subsurface scattering and then color just goes on at the end. It almost doesn't matter because your map is right. You baked it from a photo. Uh, let's go ahead and render this, see if we get some better results. All right, uh, last step is to just plug in the color map into the subsurface. Source images, head color. And there we go, there's Alex's skin. But little, little details that'll help you just push your realism a little bit farther is peach fuzz. So if I turn on this, you can see there's actually a lot of hair there. I just turned it black so you could see it. And then another thing obviously is the eyes, getting them down is very important. So this is physically, as anatomically accurate as possible. One last time what the finished product looks like. Cool, so there's the finished product. That was the most information I've ever packed into however long. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>